こんなふうに見えるんですね。So you just heard、uh, Yahoo Inc.、Uh, talk about、uh, OpenStack integration、uh, with、uh, compute. Now let's shift gears and talk about network services、uh, integration with OpenStack and discuss what Yahoo Japan and Brocade、uh, jointly worked on、um, here today. I'm Sandeep Singh Kohli, Product Marketing、uh, Brocade, and I'm very excited and pleased to welcome、uh, Matsuyo san from、uh, Yahoo Japan.、Uh, Matsuyo san is the Technical director、uh, of Yahoo Japan、uh -huh. and has had、uh, almost 13 years of experience uh, working uh, with Yahoo Japan in, in, in the data center、uh, technologies. We also have with us today、uh, Isya san from Brocade's uh, Japan <laughs>、uh, team. And Isya san,、yep. other than dropping Your iPhone pad. <laughs> <I'm nervous. laughs> he's, he's also our uh, uh, business uh, development director uh, with uh, NFV, OpenStack, and SDN. And last but definitely not、uh, the least is my dear friend、uh, Didier Stove from uh, Brocade uh, Product uh, Management. Uh, uh, Didier has had uh, uh, a lot of rich experience with.、Uh, Uh, OpenStack and has been involved with OpenStack ever since its、uh, inception. Most of you、uh, know that Brocade is a market leader、uh, when it comes to uh, SAN uh, fiber channel.、Uh, but a few of、uh, you might not know about our market leadership in IP networking. We were the first to bring to market、uh, Ethernet fabrics. And with our VCS plugin, we, provide, we provided、uh, the first、uh, fabric level orchestration. With network functional virtualization,、uh, our Viata virtual V router,、uh, when it comes to market、uh, penetration, is, is, is number one. Uh, considering the number of、uh, downloads it has, it has had. Here in Hong Kong,、uh, we are showcasing the OpenStack integration with VCS Ethernet Fabrics,、mm. SAN, uh, SAN uh, Fiber Channel, Load Balancer, and Virtual、uh, V Router. So, Isia San,、uh, I was.、Uh, Uh, talking uh, to uh, Masio san earlier uh, uh, in, in the week and, and telling him about what I read in Forbes magazine that uh, uh, Yahoo Japan、uh, was rated as one of the top 100、uh, innovative、uh, companies of the world.、Um, Isia san, do you want to、right. touch、uh, some more highlights? Okay, so Yahoo Japan is the greatest company, officially and personally, is anyway. As you see, 80 80% of internet users access Yahoo Japan, right? And over 95 million applications downloaded from the Yahoo Japan portal site. Look at that, those great things, right?、Okay? Um, why don't we start,、uh, Matsu san and Nisya san,、uh, today、uh, by talking about how many servers、uh, uh, you have virtualized and the OpenStack、um, um, percentage of Uh, these servers with OpenStack、uh, right now?、Uh, Yahoo Japan started its server virtualization in 2009,、uh, and performance improvement of hypervisor and servers、uh, improved VM density、uh, per server,、uh, and our total number of virtual machines will be more than 50,000 in 2014. 50,000? That's amazing, isn't it? I practiced this phrase 100 times. <laughs> I'm good at it. You know, right. So, anyway, for, for a good reason, which we will talk later in this session, Yahoo Japan adopted OpenStack technology rapidly as from this August. And Yahoo Japan basically abandoned the in house system management development. Uh, we estimate over 80% of VMs. Will be managed by OpenStack next year. Wow. So, you guys, remember 50,000 VMs, and 80% of that 
um, OpenStack. So, so very impressive. Um, so clearly, you're on this fat, fast path uh, for vir virtualization. Um, but what are some of the challenges you're seeing with the physical resources in your uh, data center? Uh, yeah, next. Uh, right. Yes, uh, the number of physical servers have been also increasing year by year, uh, and this causes an efficient use of rack in data center. Right. So as you can see here, oh, no, yeah. <laughs> Could you go back? Right. Yeah, as you can see here, Yahoo Japan offers many kinds of services on the portal side. And those services running on the physical servers in data center today. As shown on the left hand side, uh, the lag fully loaded by servers at the initial development, data center resources are fully available, and lag space utilization is high when service started. However, in a few years, more than half of the servers are removed. And those rack space utilization becomes less than a half. To make matters worse, for some reason, Matthias and cannot talk all the details today, but unless the network function is virtualized, those unused rack space becomes totally a dead space. As long as there is one single server running in a rack, we can reconfigure the physical lack of switch, top of lack switch, lack of switch. So I, I'm certain that there are um, other data center operators that are having this, this, uh, this problem. Uh, so what are you doing about it? Uh, we strongly believe that uh, data center life cycle management is essential in order for us to have better control or data center life cycle management, we need to be abstract data center functionalities themselves by making full use of virtualization technology. Right. So if you could abstract all the functionalities in the data center, you are free from all the constraints relating to the physical equipment data center architecture. What this means is that now you can always take the advantage of hardware that gives you less power needed, improves performance, more port density, and of course, much more cost effectiveness. So uh, absolutely, you, you need to move to these uh, virtual data centers. But um, how are you enabling the migration? And what steps are you taking for that? Yes, uh, in order to realize data center tenant migration, all hardware needed to be abstracted. Right. So in OpenStack world, what abstract hardware resource can be defined as a tenant? What we want to achieve with this is the capability to migrate a tenant from the old data center to a new data center, which is built upon the latest hardware okay. and using OpenStack. <laughs> Sorry. I forgot the very important things. <laughs> we estimate that we could reduce more than 60% of hardware cost today uh, if we could migrate all the tenants which run on hardware that's uh, three years old to the latest hardware. So, so, so folks, 60% uh, reduction in hardware cost, uh, a very significant uh, uh, number. Um, so the networking service that you have abstracted, uh, can you talk a little more about that? Yes. Uh, we started looking into OpenStack from multiple angles. In today's session, let us explain what we have done with Brocade in the RIA as part of my OpenStack initiative. In cooperation with Brocade, we enabled controlling Brocade's load balancer ADX via OpenStack. Right. And controlling load balancer, which is essential to web services by OpenStack, is a very important part of new data center lifecycle management program. Um, moving, moving to you, Didier, um, when you 
heard this business problem from Yahoo Japan. Um, what was the brocade solution that you worked on? And, and can you uh, highlight some of the work done there, please? Certainly, Sandeep. So uh, I think that, you know, uh, in a nutshell, uh, the very basic, very simple, yet very powerful idea that uh, Yahoo Japan has been pursuing all along was to fully de decouple, fully, fully unleash, if you will, all those application workloads from the physical infrastructure, right? And as we all know it, OpenStack is this abstraction layer in the middle that can really help achieving that goal, right? So given the fact that uh, Yahoo Japan had already completely taken care of the compute side of the house, right? It was for them a very natural move to actually take the next step in this progression and to take a hard look at networking, starting with load balancing, right? Load balancing being this link between the compute and the networking domains, okay? So when we started to engage with Yahoo Japan, uh, when we started to build our uh, you know, relationship with this great organization, uh, it was about April, March time frame, right, earlier this year. And at that time, what we had at our disposal was the Grizzly release. So we already started to work hard and create this Brocade ADX driver, this Brocade ADX plugin, ADX being uh, the Brocade platform that delivers load layer 4 to layer 7 services, right? And create this interrupt between the Brocade platform and this OpenStack Neutron framework, right? Uh, however, Yahoo Japan has very precise ideas, uh, ideas as to what they really want to achieve. And they came back to us and told us, look, what we really want to do is to implement a solution that fully supports direct server return. And direct return is really a great technology mechanism, if you will, that allows the real server to send the response back to the client directly without forcing the traffic to traverse back the load balancer, right? And if you think about it, you know, this, is, this solution is actually much more performant, right? Uh, looks like the, um, uh, the gain in uh, performance is about uh, eight times uh, the performance that you can uh, get with a non-DSR implementation, okay? So Yahoo Japan, which we love, uh, has very prescriptive requirements, as I said earlier, right? And not only they wanted DSR, but they wanted specifically to have layer 3 DSR as opposed to layer 2 DSR because they really wanted to take the benefit of being able to scale out their network uh, across the entire layer three domain, right? Not being bound to layer two segment. All right, so uh, we, we really wanted to help Yahoo Japan with the OpenStack deployment. So what we did, we really started to create uh, a solution for them, right? And again, when we started this project, it was back uh, in uh, April timeframe. Uh, Grizzly was out there, but as you probably all remember, there is no DSR support in Grizzly nor in Havana, right? As a matter of fact, DSR, director of return, is actually a topic that's gonna be discussed uh, this week at the Ice House Design Summit uh, sessions, right? So what is the solution that we came up with? Well, you know, uh, very naturally, what we decided to do is to create that functionality within the plugin itself, within the Brocade ADX driver, right? By leveraging this extension mechanism. All right, so we did that, right? We actually delivered to Yahoo Japan uh, this uh, Brocade ADX plugin. Uh, the Brocade ADX plugin is fully, is obviously multi-tenant capable, but also supports this role-based access control, which allows admin and users to actually uh, create the load balancer that they need. Uh, uh, and that, that solution has been actually implemented, deployed as part of the Yahoo Japan private cloud project, right? Uh, so it's been great uh, relationship between the, the two companies. We brocade, we actually learned a lot. You know, we learned about uh, how a large scale content service provider uh, or content provider is basically uh, managing a cloud compute infrastructure. 
And I think that, you know, uh, throughout this collaboration, we've been able also to help Yahoo Japan in their journey to full automation. And, you know, we are still working with them in terms of helping them out for automating even more. So uh, as, as you folks might have seen here, um, um, that we, we're talking about collaboration, we're talking about innovation. Um, and yesterday we, we were chatting about this, that six months ago was the first time when we met uh, uh, Matsuyo San uh, because of the Portland um, Summit, the OpenStack Portland Summit. And within six months, we have achieved um, so much. Essentially, the final thought I, I would like uh, you to uh, leave with today is that the vendor-customer relationship uh, is evolving. And it's evolving from a transactional uh, relationship to more of a partnership uh, relationship. And OpenStack is that collaboration platform that's driving uh, that, that change in relationship and uh, which is helping us to to innovate and, and push and drive innovation uh, forward. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, Brocade benefited uh, because we got an opportunity to uh, work on this high-scale uh, cloud use case. Uh, from Yahoo Japan's perspective, they were able to work on a joint solution uh, with the time to market constraints that, that they had. And so um, it, wa it was um, uh, a, a match uh, with, with uh, benefits from, from both sides. So uh, that's, that's essentially what uh, we wanted to um, highlight at this, uh, this session, uh, to meet the SMEs from both uh, Yahoo Japan and Brocade. Uh, you can stop by Brocade's uh, booth. And uh, with that, uh, I would like to, uh, on behalf of both Asiya San Didier, uh, I would like to thank Matsuyo San for taking the time uh, for sharing uh, this uh, user story uh, with us. And, and, and thank you for um, being here. Right. Well, anyway, we can show the live demo at the booth, right? Absolutely. 300 Absolutely. VMs? So we have, yeah, uh, we have. <laughs> so we have the Yahoo J Japan team uh, at at the booth, and uh, we we both ha we have a recorded demo and also a live demo uh, that uh, can be uh, shown at our booth. So uh, stop by, um, watch the booth, and uh, and we'll be ha happy to answer the questions uh, that you have. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.